and good morning YouTube another bright and sunny day here in Cheshire in the UK welcome to Simply Diagnostics before we start don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for the notifications you can also follow me on Twitter at PicoFlu on my Facebook page um, Simply Diagnostics Northwich comments and criticisms always welcome if you've got something to say put it down in the comment box below and uh, we'll get a conversation started thanks for watching uh, we're looking at a 2006 Honda FRV custom complaint is intermittent poor cold starting sometimes it'll just crank and crank and crank other times it'll start on the button there's no DTC stored in the vehicle um, so we're just going to have a, have a quick look through see what it uh, see what it looks like see what we can find uh, i'm suspecting it might be an egr issue or a coking up issue um, it is quite common on these but we'll have a look so let's start the vehicle and see what happens Near that it's quite an extended crank on it um, they normally start a little bit better than that the starter doesn't sound the best um, we'll have a look at some fuel pressure maybe do a leak off test um, we'll have a look at whether the EGR is working or not so let's get right to it right so a brief overview of the vehicle the normal uh, common mail system EGR valve uh, Intake flap, throttle body, um, fuel rail. It, it uh, sounds a bit, sounds a bit tired in that. So we'll, uh, what we'll do, we're first going to have a look at um, whether the EGR has been commanded on or off. We've got two, two wires. Basically, one of the, one of the wires is going to be um, full time live, and the other one of the wires will probably be due to cycle or PWM signal to operate the EGR solenoid which then will put vacuum into the capsule which will open the EGR valve so let's, uh, let's have a look at some live data first right so for live data you can see at the moment we're running 16 grams per second in air uh, 550 milligrams actual normal manifold pressure and that so let's first of all let's just check to see um, whether the EGR is in fact open or not so all I'm, all I'm going to basically do is I'm going to put I'm going to put my vacuum gauge onto the capsule there and we're going to see if we can get any change at all in the engine note is fully open now you can hear it only change very very slightly I'll release the pressure or vacuum should I say vacuum applied release the vacuum I would expect to have a much more significant influence on uh, on the engine note than that have a look at the live data when we do the same thing I'm now applying vacuum you can see the actual air mass dropping right down then off so the EGR is doing something but it's still not having as much effect as I would expect it to. I've, I've also now I've just put another another vacuum gauge. Put another vacuum gauge onto the 
onto the, onto the uh, pipe coming from the solenoid just to make sure that there's no vacuum bleeding off from the solenoid and there isn't. I'm quite happy with that. So that, if you've got a scan tool that hasn't got bi-directional control, um, that's one easy way to do that. And now what I'm going to do is I'll get you focused in on the lab scope. Right, so we do a quick portability check with our lab scope. So we've got battery voltage. We're going to one wire. Battery voltage. We're going to the other wire. We've got some sort of a, some sort of control there. We quickly, as we hop, hop back, let's just have a look and see if we can get a duty cycle measurement on that. So, second motion is duty cycle. Uh, 5% right, so we've run through the basics of the basics of the EGR. Um, my suspicions are now that the EGR is sticking open intermittently. I don't think it's having as much of an effect on uh, on the engine as it should when we're manually operating it. Um, I'm quickly going to run through a couple of methods of doing a compression test for you. We'll do a quick uh, diesel leak off test and we'll see where we go from there. Now we're actually going to go into the Pico Diagnostic software. This is one option of doing it. And then we'll select... Can you see that? Yeah. So, then we'll select Compression Test. So, connections, basically, I've got my Pico scope connected up um, to my laptop. I've got one lead connected to battery positive battery ground and I've also got my 600 amp amp clamp around the, around the battery cable. Now you do have the option of using a pressure transducer but with the diesel I'm not going to start uh, breaking into a fuel system. So all I'm going to quickly do is uh, select four cylinders, I've disabled injection, hit start, it tells you to ensure the throttle is all fully open for the duration of this test. The throttle should be open on this as it's an electronic throttle and it's a diesel. It says crank, en crank engine. So there you can see, we've got uh, a quick, easy, relative compression test, saying all cylinders above 80%. Uh, it ran nine complete revolutions of the engine to evaluate it. We've got two at 100%, one at 95 and one at 98. So there is a little bit of difference, but they're all showing green. Now the other way we can do this is if we use the conventional Pico software, I use this test quite a lot on both on both my scopes. Um, so all we're going to be using now is the 600 amp amps clamp and battery voltage. So I want about 500 milliseconds per, per division. Channel A set uh, to a 20 volt scale. Channel B, we go in, we select 600 amps clamp. Minus, go up to 100. And we just set it running. Stop the scope.
Well, let's have a let's have a look. So we go back a couple of frames. What we can see here. Just pull me channel A up out of the way. What we're looking at, we're looking for the compression peaks. Use a ruler, drag a ruler down to the top of the compression peaks. They all look reasonably, reasonably even. So we can see we've got we've got no dead cylinders there. Go back to the frame before. The interesting thing here is that the, the starter motor is actually pulling 250 amps on, on cranking where that was the top of them peaks. That's 200, 250 amps, so it's pulling about 200 amps. So it's uh, it's struggling to, you know, the, the, it's, it's putting a bit of work in there. And then we had a quick measurement. If we go down to the bottom, had a quick measurement. We want channel B. We want maximum. All trace. And it's showing us there that the maximum it actually pulled. If we can zoom in on that for you. Can zoom in. Maximum it actually pulled was 867 amps, which is massive. Massive. So it's, it's it's struggling to turn that over. You know, it's putting in a lot of work. That is. Um, it might be due a starter motor soon. And then we add another add a, another quick measurement, and we'll do a quick measurement on channel A this time. So channel A, and we want to measure the minimum this time so we're looking at the minimum the voltage dropped and we can see by the same token it actually dropped down to 8.38 volts um, minimum which is uh, again if you imagine now on a, on a cold morning that's going to drop even lower so combined with a, a high current drawing starter motor a battery that's dropping down to 8 volts with an EGR that's slightly stuck open this thing's really got its work cut out for it starting so yeah so it just took a, a, a couple of different a couple of different ways of testing of doing a of doing a, a current a current draw test so you've got the the, the Pico diagnostics version uh, which is quick quick easy one connection so basically all you're looking at is a, a battery connection from the scope and that'll give you a relative compression and uh, the the one using the standard Pico automotive software two channels one channel with a, a current clamp and the other with a battery voltage and it gives you quite an accurate uh, health check for the starting system on the vehicle so I hope you in, in conclusion what we can say is that I'm not very photogenic but what we can basically what we can say is on this beautiful sunny Friday afternoon um, we've got a vehicle there that's got a slightly open EGR valve slightly stuck open EGR valve we've got a starter motor that's drawing excessive current we've got a battery that's dropping down um, to about eight and a half volts on a cold morning it really is going to be struggling it's going to be up against it the last thing we're going to do I'm going to quit do a quick uh, leak off test on the injectors to see whether we've got um, excessive leak off on any of the injectors this uh, Honda's got a hundred and seventy thousand miles on it so it's had a it's had a good life it's had a good life right so leak off test coming up next right, so set up for this leak off test it's very very simple we've got the injectors unplugged to disable injection we have the the spill pipes or the leak off pipes disconnected and clamped and then we've got four sample tubes and all I'm going to do now I'm going to crank 
the engine and I want to see less than 10% difference between the best and the worst of the four cylinders. Hopefully you'll be able to see the diesel in them. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to crank it about 10, 20 seconds and we'll see what happens. Shout if they start to overflow. Oh, that was close, wasn't it? Well, that was about 15 seconds of cranking. Let me just get you in free running mode again. You can see injector number one, cylinder number one, we've got about one cc of fuel. Number two, we've got about one cc of fuel. Number three, we've got one, two, three, Count with me if you want. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then number four, we've got one, two, three, four. So what we can say from that, it wants, there's definitely more than 10%. I would say this wants an injector in cylinder number three and an injector in cylinder number four. So how do you like that? We get sunshine, counting, EGR, diesel, relative compression test using two methods, all on one sunny Friday afternoon. Well, I hope you enjoyed that case study. So the conclusion there is 170,000 mile Mazda, it, uh, it's had hard life. It's going to need a starter. It's probably going to need um, a bit of TLC on that battery because that starter will be taken out of it. Um, so we, we want to check the electrolyte level in that battery as well. Even though it's a new battery, um, that's going to be pulling a lot out of that. Um, and it wants two injectors. It also wants the EGR taking off, stripping, cleaning, intake manifold and all that decoking. And it should be good for another 170 miles. It'll never do another 170,000. Thanks for watching. You guys have been awesome. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button down below. Follow me on Twitter at PicoFlu for all the notifications. Jump over onto my business page on Facebook, Simply Diagnostics Northwich. And hit the like and share. And if you've got any comments or questions about any of the test methods I've used in this video, feel free to leave a comment below and a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.